I just want to watch Big Thing fight Big Thing. <laughs> no, no, that gets me to buy a movie ticket every single time. Right. <laughs> there it is! There it is! <laughs> Hey there, everyone, and welcome to GalaxyCon Live, where we're bringing the convention experience directly to you. I am your host for today's panel, Mario Bueno, and we know that there is a colossal amount of excitement for today's panel because very few shows from the anime world in the past decade have really broken through the walls as Attack on Titan has becoming a global hit over its many years of publication, as well as four seasons of animated programming, it is easily one of the most iconic, one of the most recognizable anime to come out. So we are very, very excited as in the next couple of weeks, the show is coming to an end, the manga is coming to an end. And today we are being joined by members of the English cast of the animated version of Attack on Titan. So without further ado, let's bring them out to the virtual stage so we can get right to the Q&A. First up, you know them as Merlin in Seven Deadly Sins. Michiru Kairu, a.k.a. Sailor Neptune in Sailor Moon, and Annie Leonhardt in Attack on Titan. Please welcome Lauren Landa. Hello! Hi, Hello. Mario! Hello! How are <laughs> welcome, you? Welcome, I'm doing just fine. Uh, it sounds like you had a very uh, exciting day as well. <laughs> <laughs> I did, and I'm still awake uh, without any coffee. I don't know how, but it's working somehow, so. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll be feeding off of the vibes of these excited Attack on Titan fans, so let's not keep them waiting. Let's bring out our next guest to our virtual stage. You know them as Shoyo Hinata in Haikyuu, Mitsuru in Darling in the Franks, Bell Cranel in Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon, and Falco Grice in Attack on Titan. Please welcome Bryson Boggitz. <sighs> <laughs> hey guys. Hey, hey, it's welcome, me. welcome. Welcome, thanks for having me so much. I'm, I'm so excited to be here. Um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm the newest member of the cast uh, to, to be on here, so I'm super happy to be here with, with <laughs> everybody who's who's been in this, this series for so long. It, it's, it's exciting and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> no, we're, we're glad to have you here as well. I'm sure uh, all of the Attack on Titan fans are also excited to have you here. So next up, uh, from the original roster, <laughs> you know them as Masairo Ojiro in My Hero Academia, Buggy in One Piece, Master Roshi in Dragon Ball Z, and Jean Kirstein in Attack on Titan, Mike McFarland. Hey, hey. Yay! <clears throat> Doing just fine. Glad to have you here. Welcome, welcome. How's it going over there? It's going all right, man. It's been a long, busy day, and I'm uh, looking forward to this. Oh, that is fantastic. <laughs> We're also looking forward to it as well. And someone else who I know a lot of folks are looking forward to, this is Mao Sado and Demon King Satan in The Devil is a Part-Timer, Yuri Katsuki in Yuri on Ice, Fumikage Tokoyami in My Hero Academia, and Armin Arlet in Attack on Titan. Please welcome Josh Greeley. Hey. Guys. Thank you for yeah. having me back. It's always fun to be here. Lauren, Mike, always good to see you guys. Bryson, welcome. It's so awesome to have you with us, man. <laughs> Thanks. <Yeah. laughs> welcome to the Titan family. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, uh, we are going to be completing the family because <laughs> next up on our virtual stage, you know them as Naviro in Monster Hunter Stories Ride On, Lan Fan in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Kyoka Jiro in My Hero Academia, and Mikasa Akerman in Attack on Titan. Please welcome Trina Nishimura. Hello! Yeah! Woo! 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 Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I was clapping for all of you too whenever whenever this starts. <laughs> uh, so so nice to see everybody activity. sharing the love over here in our virtual stage. And because we know that a lot of our wonderful fans are going to be asking so many questions, let's jump right into it with our first one. So uh, one of the most 
uh, interesting things about Attack on Titan. One of its hallmarks, if you will, uh, is the moral ambiguity to not just its characters, but its world, especially in the current season as we head towards this roller coaster of a finale. Uh, from an acting perspective, what have you found most enjoyable about that, especially as we, uh, for, for those of you who have been with the show from the beginning, as we transition into this very different uh, final arc? Ooh. Who wants Ooh. to go first? Yeah, who, who wants to go first? Um, I guess I'll, I'll, I, I guess I'll start. Um, my, mine's, uh, for me, it's uh, I came in. I came to the show. I watched the show as a fan when the first season came out, and then whenever I found out that they decided to use me for this final season, I was like, oh, now I need to watch the second and third season because I fell off of it. And so I went back and rewatched the whole thing. So like, yeah, I, I've definitely like uh, enjoyed how it's sort of completely done all these twists and turns and, and makes you question like who you side with and, and all this stuff. But at the same time, it, it's like, is there really a side that's right? Is there, is there really, is, is any side really doing what's best for all the people? And that's kind of why I like uh, my character Falco as well. He's, he's very much like myself. He, he tries to see from every angle that he can, like, why are they doing this? Oh, that's because we did X to them so many years ago. And, and he's, he's very level headed about like trying to understand the emotional, uh, issues that everybody's going through while also at the same time trying to like keep, keep the peace as much as he can as, as power, as powerless as he is. And he, he's not, he, he doesn't get the chance to do much to, to help the situation, uh, quite yet as far as I know. Um, but he, he definitely has that sort of moral through line that I, I really enjoy about him and, and, uh, that he, he's very trying to see how everyone feels and, and yeah. <laughs> The show yeah. is really complicated in so many ways. Uh, well, in so many different ways, because uh, kind of like what Bryson was saying is there's no real true uh, bad guy, so to speak. Everyone's trying to survive throughout this entire story. Um, <clears throat> as far as from an actor's perspective, uh, Annie's just very interesting because she's very flat and very emotionless throughout the majority of the time that we see her. Um, but in this season, um, it's it's a little different, um, and I, I won't say too many spoilers, obviously, but uh, it was, I, I think Mike can back me up on this, that during the session, I just, I almost started crying because I was so excited to be able to have this big dramatic scene, and I was so excited about getting that uh, feel as an actor, you know, because, I mean, a lot of anime characters, um, don't have as many dramatic moments. And so it's so much fun. It's so much fun to play that. And it's so much fun to kind of work out those acting muscles, so to speak. Um, so I, I love it. And this series uh, really has a, you know, place in my heart. I love it so much. It was the first show that I did with Funimation. So uh, I was very excited to, yeah, <laughs> it was the first show that I ever did with Funimation. So it was an amazing way to start uh, my work relationship with them. So I'm, I'm very grateful to be a part of it. But Good God, this show, man. It's like one of those shows that you don't want to watch when you're really stressed out. Or maybe you do. <laughs> maybe you <Right>. do. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But then exactly you could also be one of the end of day. Exactly. It, it yeah. you know, just has you on the edge of your seat the entire time. And it's really, truly such a unique show um, in many different ways. I don't know if that answered the question, but I hope it did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, kind of like like you and Bryson were saying, like it it it's been really cool just following the show from the beginning, watching it transform from this really cool mystery about who the Titans are, you know, where they are, what they what they're about, where they came from, and then it kind of turning into this vastly different kind of socio political story that that's also about the cycle of hatred and 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 like all this really neat stuff and and from an actor's perspective like just from following arm being with armin through this whole thing uh we've always kind of known that armin's been telling the story uh kind of since the beginning and he's he's always we don't know at what point you know what's happened and where he's telling this story from and i feel like with this season we're finally getting closer to that to catching up to where he is and and it it's for me i've definitely felt and heard both like just from the show itself and listening to the japanese counterpart that armin in this season 
is so close to sounding like the narrator in terms of being that very kind of broken or or that very, that very like <laughs> just like they've seen he's seen some things and he, it has completely changed him from who he was in the first season and I feel like we're finally kind of closing in on that and so it's 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 really exciting. Mm-hmm. Watching <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, virtual, virtual oh, pass wait. from um, like there. <laughs> wait, this is Josh is under me, so they're there. I can't reach around my stuff. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to the uh, the the group therapy session for Armin. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like all of the characters, especially the characters that have been present from the beginning of the series, have undergone so much change. Um, not only, you know, starting like, uh, you know, the the three core kids like um, Aaron and Armin and Mikasa, they all started together as children and watching them grow and go through so much and live through so much trauma. And um, then when you apply uh, the outward pressures of that world, right? Like the socioeconomic pressures that Josh was talking about, um, the societal pressures and expectations and other things that are put upon these kids. And then as watching them grow into young adults has been really, really um, uh, rewarding for me as an actor uh, to be able to play Mikasa from a young child uh, into a young adult and being able to, you know, grow with her and experience those things with her while at times has been incredibly traumatic um, has also been incredibly rewarding as an actor. And I think that I speak for everyone in the cast uh, in saying, and I very rarely say that, I swear to God, uh, but I think I speak for everyone in the cast in that um, all of that growth and all of the trauma and all of the um, performances that we were all able to deliver would have only been possible uh, because of Mike McFarland and making that recording space safe um, and allowing us to explore how deep and dark and awful um, some of these people's experiences have been. And I, for one, could not have felt as safe, <laughs> like bawling my eyes out, uh, if it weren't for Mike McFarland as the director. Because I like him. He's over, he's over here. Hi, <laughs> Mike. He's that yes. way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, now Josh and Mike are fighting, no. That's that's absolutely true. I mean, it's I, I fully support that 100%, Trina. And, and not to mention, I don't know about you guys, but um, whenever I think of Trina, I, I automatically think of strength. I really do. I promise you. I just think of, I really do. I just think, oh, she is one strong woman and I respect her so much. So I can't imagine anyone else being the voice of Mikasa. I really cannot because she yeah. truly is someone that a lot of... Um, young women can look up to and oh they God, you know what that. i mean good <laughs> no no but it's it's true though it's it's i really think that you know sometimes um the actors can truly bring the character even more to life obviously um but if they even have a reflection of that character then it truly has an even greater effect and that's what i think when i think of you and mikasa i have for years so just so you know. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> I'm okay. What about you, Mike? How was it for you, like, recording through? Because you were Jean Kirstein as well, right? Like, yeah, I'm Jean Kirstein as well as the ADR director. Um, uh, with, with Jean, it's, um, there's been a lot of growth throughout. Uh, so what we've seen this season is what that growth has currently led him toward. Um, we got to mess around a little bit as far as uh, some of the characters who've been in the show before with like a, a multi-year skip in the timeline when we come back and everyone went from like mid-teenager to either late teenager or early 20s, kind of depending on how you want to look at it or, you know, how detailed you want to get in each individual character. Um, so there was a maturity in the voice uh, and there's also just like a, a bit of... Uh, emotional and world maturity, I guess, however you want to say it, like, uh, they all been through some stuff. So <laughs> beyond just like the little bit of, you know, of depth that happens as you grow older, they've also like lived uh, harsher, rougher um, 
more uh, traumatic lives than, you know, your average person that doesn't have to deal with all the crap that they're dealing with. Um, yeah. I also want to, uh, as you guys have kind of uh, shouted out to each other, I wanted to shout out to the whole cast because I, I can't imagine anybody uh, <laughs> besides uh, you guys playing uh, the dev cast for the show. And I'm, I'm so happy to work with each of you and you're wonderful. You're wonderful. We love you. <laughs> oh, that's a hard thing. It's a giant love fest. That's what all this panel is going to be. It's just one giant love fest. <laughs> yeah, keeping those uh, positive vibes going. Given given the, the otherwise, you know, very, very morbid, very uh, dark world of Attack on Titan. So it's nice to see behind the scenes very much the opposite. So it looks like we are ready for some fan questions. Uh, let's jump right into it. Let's see what everybody would like to find out. So we're starting with a question from AJ. <laughs> Do you prefer voicing adorable characters or disturbing characters more? Very nice follow-up, AJ. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I have a caveat to that. I have I oh. have a I have a retort okay. to that. Um, okay. In anime, they're often both. So <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know. I I, I think I think personally. I like playing the more disturbing characters. Those are so much fun to play. I, I like the disturbing characters more. So maybe I, I'm just messed up, but I you think, know. I think it is more cathartic to be someone crazy, disturbing, doing evil, because, you know, I, I know as me, I don't want to be disturbing or do evil. I want to I want to be kind and put goodness out into the world. <laughs> so that I, I do think that it is very, you know, balancing, therapeutic, whatever, to, uh, as an actor, get to do something crazy mm -hmm. yeah uh, i don't i don't get to play very many sinister or disturbing characters so I, I i guess i have more experience in doing i guess you would consider them adorable characters like like bell or hinata or i, I guess even f in the context of titan falco i would say is a, a cute character uh but um i i did play i did play um Lauren's familiar with this one. Yes, I did play I am. A kind of a sinister, a sinister-ish character in a in a little vampire boy show called Diabolic Lovers, and his name was Ko, and he was just like, this just this terrible guy. Like everybody loved him because he was friendly at first, but then he like gives the main girl like a present, and whenever she like just is like, oh okay, thanks, and he's like, well, you're not gonna give something back, and then he just like completely turns on a dime it's just so crazy it's so weird um but those are those are fun because it's so like the opposite of who i am like in real life because it's just like Ooh, i get to just be this creep and it's it's fun but at the same time i'm like whoa <laughs> <laughs> I think like you know, part of the fun of acting and like getting into yeah. acting is about getting to explore a variety of characters and then like exactly. what's more fun than getting to play something that you would never be in real life. Exactly. And, and here to explore that. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I enjoy, I love playing villains. I love playing disturbing, you know, darker characters and stuff because they tend to have, uh, they tend to be less one dimensional than some mm -hmm. characters. Uh, they, they use like sure. sometimes they can be like you just have that one note over the top like Joker esque type villains and those are fun too. But more often than not, I feel like the darker characters just have a lot more meat on the bones. You know, mm -hmm. to, yeah, to with, with very very few exceptions, um, most characters in literature that are seen as villains they they don't see themselves as such. They're just yeah. you know someone who's in a situation. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah. Trina, what about you? I think <laughs> I think I I I have the the good fortune of frequently being cast as emotionally traumatized girls <laughs> who oh, like, no. have a lot of awful stuff happen to them throughout the course of their life that like they now reflect upon and have awful so um, while those characters are really fun and it's great to be able to um, embody that person for a, a short period of time, it's also like in my brain really fun uh, to, um, well, I enjoy being able to tap into those people. Uh, it's also really fun to play little critters. I love playing little animals and critters that have funny voices. Uh, you mentioned a character that I played named Naviru. Um, Chris George directed that show and cast me as this uh, Iru or this uh, feline. It's this little cat sidekick and he sounds like this all the time and he's obsessed with donuts and I love him. 
Zuma. I'm now in love with him. I'm now in love with him. So he likes donuts. He's a cat. You know, whatever. He doesn't like donuts. <laughs> By mm-hmm. the way, Mario, props to you for pronouncing all of those Japanese names before those character names before we started. I know that's not easy. So props to you, my friend. <laughs> uh, many many years of uh, masquerade MC <laughs> and getting the copy like an hour before the show. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Do appreciate it though. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So uh, thank you so much for all those wonderful answers. Let's go on to our next one. Uh, this one is from Eve, and the oh, question no. is: What advice would you give your character if you got to meet them in real life? Therapy. <laughs> Therapy. <laughs> Therapy. Therapy. <laughs> Josh. So I guess it it depends. Are we meeting them in their world to try and give them advice about how they should handle their situation, or are they coming to us in in the real world? Like, hey, <laughs> contextualize all that you went through and and just like uh, apply it to life out here. That'd be fun. I'm, I'm gonna go with the latter because I'm okay. pretty sure no one wants to see any of you guys get eaten by titans. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. That would be a bad time. Well, no. <laughs> Mike would Mike would be very sad having to recast because someone got literally eaten by a titan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, boy, you don't have to trust everybody. Like it's it's okay. Some people, <laughs> some people, you just gotta be like, oh, okay, cool, cool guy. Uh, I'll see you later. I I'll just go do my own thing. If if you want to send your letters out to to your family, you can go do that. But <laughs> you, you don't, gotta be, so, you don't gotta be so trusting of everyone you meet, uh, kid. <laughs> Kind of bouncing off of Trina, I would also say therapy, definitely, but also learn to trust people. Um, I feel like if Annie, I mean, I know that she, there's a whole lot of stuff behind her story, but I feel like if she had talked to people and told them what was going on, a lot of this wouldn't have happened, but she was on a mission, is on a mission. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, therapy and, and making new friends. Making new friends is just so important. And and I really think that if she made new friends, she'd be way happier. I think we all would. So, you know, that's, that's my take on it. It's been a while, but does she have any, like, actual friends throughout the show? At least, yes. She like, does. Is there anybody? Okay. I was she trying does. to remember if she, there was anybody that she enjoyed being around. Oh, okay. Very <laughs> much Armin. <laughs> Armin and uh, I, I, I don't know how, what are, I don't know what's a spoiler and what's not a spoiler yeah. now. So then assume that it is. Yeah. Assume that it is. Okay, yeah, that's what I usually do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Armin definitely, mm, you know, yeah. she definitely saw or sees Armin as a good person. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, does that change anything? Not necessarily, mm-hmm. but I know she remembers it. So. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, so I'm going to assume yeah. the uh, prior answers were blanket answers for everybody who <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, uh, but let's jump a lot of therapy. <laughs> a lot of therapy. TLDR, lots of therapy for one character, uh, Bryson's advice for the other character, the reverse of Bryson's advice. <laughs> Done. So let's move on to our next question. <laughs> Clickety clack indeed. Uh, this one is from Styles. What other fandom would you like to see have a crossover with Attack on Titan? Oh, I actually have an answer for this one, but I'm gonna I would like to hear you guys uh, answer this one first. What? What's your answer, Mario? Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, I hear your answer. answer. <laughs> so th- this actually uh, goes a little bit back to the initial question I-, I posited to all of you. So this is a this is a bit of a deep dive, but let me take everybody back a few steps. So the live action Attack on Titan movie was co-directed by one of well was directed by one of the co-directors of Shin Godzilla. Mm. <laughs> and if you've seen Shin Godzilla and you know the ending of Shin Godzilla, you can kind of see where I'm kind of going with this. I've always joked that one was kind of a, a low-key backdoor pilot for a crossover right there. Oh. So, all season. I'm just saying I've been I've been rooting for Godzilla. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> Godzilla's just gonna burst out. <laughs> or sorry, Shin Godzilla will be like, because he's got the little stubby arms there, but <laughs> I, I would love to see a canon Godzilla, Shin Godzilla, Attack on Titan crossover. That is my personal answer. Floor <laughs> zeros, guys. <laughs> uh, what is it? I'll, I'll say 
uh, I've actually never really watched much Gundam, but I'd like to see a Gundam <laughs> versus Titans, so like real mechs versus flesh mechs. There we wow. go. Wow. <laughs> All right. All right. That's a smart answer. Yeah. I was going to say like Neon Genesis Evangelion, like not only go against those, you know, the Avas, but go against the Angels too. Use the yeah, Odie yeah. against the Angels. So, <laughs> so two really depressing shows going against each other, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're working hand in hand, as it were. Yeah. Well, because uh, Anno did, he was the other co-director of Shin Godzilla. So, hey, we got we got two for two. Hey. <laughs> Back in all the dots. Two degrees <laughs> of separation from Shinji Ikari. Oh. <laughs> I can't think of, I can't think of a crossover. Uh, um, there's so many. I was going to say, as far as like, just completely non-anime things, it would only make sense for the crossover to happen if kind of world circumstances were the same. Like it couldn't be futuristic because then the Titans wouldn't like be a, a challenge or anything because we'd have like, you know, death stars and things that could just blow them up. Um, mm -hmm. So I would say what about like, um, like a Jules Verne crossover, like with Captain Nemo landing on parody, Ooh. something like that. Oh, oh gosh. <clears throat> That's and awesome. You know, yeah. Steampunk cool. meets more steampunk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, a very, it's a very nice match, especially in terms of the technology available. So it'd be it'd be mm. a level playing field. I like yeah. that. <laughs> oh yeah, Gundam mm. was probably Gundams would probably steamroll. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. It depends. Yeah. Like some, yeah, some of them maybe. are definitely OP. Uh, so <laughs> that that's out of out of out of the question there. But um, yeah. others, yeah, I can think of some a of few more... Gundams from G Gundam that would probably oh yeah forget it. That'd be a right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Windmill Gundam. I just want to. I just want to watch Big Thing fight Big Thing. <laughs> no, that gets me to buy a movie ticket every single time. Right. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> I've been trying to be so quiet. No, don't you ever hold that in, Trina. Never. I love your laugh too much. I love it so much. Aww. Oh my gosh. Uh, so before we move on, uh, Trina, do you actually have uh, something that you want to contribute or are you just like, I'm, I'm, I'm good here, break? <laughs> oh no, I just, um, you mentioned Shin Godzilla and I dubbed Shin Godzilla and so my brain was just like trying to work all of that out and then Josh <laughs> mentioned Evangelion and I was in Evangelion and so like I had Absolutely. three worlds colliding and then I was thinking about it and I was like come up with a good answer come up with a good answer and like I was like just think of the first thing just first thing just say that and I was like Care Bears and I was like don't say that that's not the right answer Care Bears but actually <laughs> I mean, maybe the Care Bears would right. be able to. They'll take them down to, with the Care Bear stare. Yeah. You know, maybe they'd be able to help the people. It's okay. They, care I, they can't all be gold, you know. Or, like, bear, bear don't bear you know, bear. Aaron? Some people have it way worse off than you. <laughs> oh it would be just as violent, but people would be less depressed. Hey, it's a win-win. No. <laughs> All right, awesome, so uh, awesome. we will definitely accept that as an answer. <laughs> and also, <laughs> it, the whole time you were you were giving that uh, connecting of dots, I'm I'm just thinking, oh yeah, it's all coming together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's see what else we have in the Q and A queue. Uh, this one is from I'm going to assume Asen, which is really hilarious for me to say, considering <laughs> uh, what have you uh, what have your experiences on Attack on Titan taught you about acting? directing, or titan killing? <laughs> well, first you go for the nape of the neck. That's mm -hmm. that's what it's taught me. Um, yeah. Protect your neck, literally. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what has it taught me about acting? Well, I, you know, Attack on Titan was one of the, um, I, I've been in a few dramatic series or drama series, but Attack on Titan really, like I had said earlier, was really a very unique show of um, just because it's anime doesn't mean it needs to always be over the top. It mm -hmm. can always be a little more realistic and be a little bit, bit more natural. And also kind of going back to what Trina said about Mike is that we really wanted 
to set the mood of that. We wanted to really do the show justice with that. Um, so we didn't we didn't want to take it over the top. We wanted to play it as real as we could in an anime show. So I, I really truly think that it just kind of helped me work out those muscles of you know like pushing that dramatic feeling of it but at the same time with annie she the problem with annie is that she's again like i said she's emotionless but a lot of her line reads are very straightforward and very uh what's the term i'm not monotone but we wanted to make sure she didn't sound like you know i was just reading from a script she obviously has to have some emotion to her um so that was a challenge in itself like being emotionless but still having emotion in there without sounding too flat it was it was very it was a challenge but i loved it i as an actor i love getting challenges thrown at me it helps me become better at my craft so i definitely appreciate it Annie has emotion. She's just reserved. Yeah. Yes. Reserved. Thank you. <laughs> Unless she's Thank like, you. you know, turning into the female Titan and, and killing things. And stomping and, and, and treating people like they're yo-yos and all of that, which was very <laughs> messed up, but it happens. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so like I mentioned, I'm, I'm the newest person to join this particular cast. So I haven't been able to, I haven't been able to uh, work too much on, on the show yet. It's only been like, I think two months now, Mike. Uh, and it's it's been from home as well, but I I've done shows like this before where they do want you to be more uh, realistic and grounded with like reactions and and just like your levels like the person you're talking to is right there. You don't have to project so much like like in theater and stuff like that. And I'm used to a lot of shows, um, a lot of the shows I'm in like like Haikyuu or 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 Damachi. My character is like a heightened more. Uh, more comedic caricature, very anime style. So I, I always love it when I get to be in shows like this one. Uh, my first uh, Funimation show was actually Darling in the Franks two years ago, and Clifford uh, Chapin, he was the director for that, and he wanted to go very similar with how we're how Mike's been handling um, Titan, from what I can tell, is that it, it just he also wanted that more sort of grounded thing. So I'm I'm always happy to be able to work on shows like that and stretch stretch those legs a little bit more. Uh, stretch those muscles, stretch those legs. My metaphors are mixed. Uh, but yeah, that one's, it, it's it's always great for me to be able to come back to those types of shows because, like I said, a, a majority of the shows I do get to be a part of tend to be the more heightened, very anime style uh, thing. So, yeah. <laughs> Pretty similar. And yeah, uh, getting to work on, getting to do more subtlety as opposed to so often in anime, we like we've said, we play these very larger than life characters. And, uh, and especially just because of the way that uh, like Japanese uh, kabuki style, uh, kabuki theater kind of influences the way that they, that anime is done. There's those very grand, very over the top, very overdone stylized uh, things to show emotion and to show, uh, um, to just pass along ideas. And, uh, that's fun, but getting to go and rein it in and get to do something more like you would do, perform something or think about a performance more like you would if you were on camera. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 it takes a, uh, it's kind of like a muscle memory that you have to learn just like anything else with acting. And I hadn't had a lot of opportunities before attack on Titan to work those muscles out. And so it was really cool to get to do that. Mm -hmm. um, as far brilliant, as like, Josh. Uh, Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> as far as what the show taught me about Titan killing, uh, if you can do it at night, do it then, because they're doing it. <laughs> if not, how long? <laughs> Become nocturnal. That's, that's the... Yeah, right. <laughs> and, get a, and get a hidey hole to sleep in during the day. <laughs> right. <laughs> can you know, that would have been awesome, though, if we could have had, like, if we had made I Odie and here... Um, like, I'm sorry, go ahead, Trina. I didn't. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. Um, I think that um, Attack on Titan taught me um, most about Titan killing. The thing that Attack on Titan taught me most about Titan killing is that you should leave it up to the Survey Corps because you <laughs> never see like random dude be like, all right, I've got this Titan killing thing down and then they're fine. They're never <laughs> fine. Like just leave it up to the guys with the ODM here and you'll be fine. <laughs> like just that's their wheelhouse. 
<laughs> no, totally. Mike, what about you? Um, as far as the Titan killing, uh, I would say know your Titan because uh, they they don't all have the exact same weakness. Uh, though they may have the same weak spot, uh, it's not as approachable on some as it is on others. <laughs> so, um, and as far as uh, acting and performance and things like that, uh, I tend to, as a actor and as a, a voice director, I tend to gravitate towards a lot of darker, grittier uh, material. And sometimes it's realistic and sometimes it's not, but I tend to just enjoy that kind of stuff. It's the kind of stuff, like if I was going to the movie theater, I'm like, oh, I want to see that one. Like there's a horror movie that's playing and that's what I want to see. Uh, that's just the kind of stuff that I like. So um, I think with that, there comes a certain um, degree of reality versus the heightened reality that you're in. And uh, with anime, you have uh, yet another uh, um, thing to deal with is that everyone's drawn a certain way and there are music cues and there are everything else that kind of leads you to go towards a certain direction with what you do. So um, honoring the material is a, is a big part of that and uh, you know, paying attention to all of those aspects plus what the, uh, the seiyus are doing and what the original per performance and direction was uh, and to honor that while still being able to make it sound like these were all choices that you naturally made on your own. It's a nice big balancing act of, you know, everything. Yeah. Yeah. All the things. <laughs> <laughs> this one is from Brendan. Was there any time recording Attack on Titan where you got emotional in the booth? I, I, I definitely feel like we started answering this earlier in, in the panel, so uh, let's, let's deep dive if you guys uh, do not mind. Trina. Trina's got to go first. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mikasa does get emotional. Uh, she, um, in general, uh, has endured quite a lot. And so the, the way that I relate to her specifically um, is that she, she takes all of her emotions and all of her things and, and she just balls them up and just keeps them inside um, for later. And then <laughs> whenever she does eventually have an emotional moment or like that wall is brought, not that wall, that uh, wall of stoicism <laughs> and strength is uh, when that is brought down and she is vulnerable and she does lose her composure, um, that, that ball of stress and emotion and drama just comes up and she just vomits it everywhere. Um, so there's a, there, was a, um, there was a lot of, I, I would say more screaming than crying. But the, the times during the show when there was a lot of crying, it was really hard crying and really terrifying. Um, and luckily, again, Mike provided that safe space so that afterwards he'd be like, after crying and assuming that all of my friends were dead um, and my family members, uh, he'd be like, he would bring a picture up on the screen or a video and be like, look at this cat playing with this ball of yarn. And I'd be like, that's so beautiful, Mike. <laughs> well, I a, a, a serotonin refill. Yeah. <laughs> you cried more than I did, though, Josh. A lot. Uh, <laughs> that was kind of his thing for season one. Like, I'll be the crying one. Oh. Uh, just <laughs> um, I think times that I got emotional would probably be like after the end of last season when we made it to the beach and we oh kind of. God. Yeah, just that moment, and even like Mikasa taking her boots off, and like, and 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 like, and like going into the water, and and like, and like, and, like the first time that I'd ever seen anything like that, just that huge body of water before, and just everybody being all uncertain, and like this was something so new, and also just so wondrous, and but it was so simple because it was just water, but it meant everything to them, and like after that, like uh, I had a, I had a good I had a good cry after we finished that one, but. Uh, yeah, as far as that's probably the most emotional that I got personally, just in terms of a moment from the show. 
uh, uh, for for me, I haven't had like any sort of major character defining emotional outburst scenes yet, but I have had definitely a few great scenes th uh, so far, and I can't wait to see where they go with this character. It definitely seems like they're building my character up to be, or at least the the, the story seems like it's building up him to to be the the kind of character that will eventually have something uh, along the lines of of an emotional outburst scene, and I can't wait to see how that is. I've only I've only seen as far as how the subtitles go, so I haven't read them. Or anything, I've heard a couple of spoilers because comment commenters like to be commenters. Uh, but I, I'm still excited to see how some of this, that stuff plays out. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I, the moment that just popped into my head, and this truly made me so upset, um, was um, the the last time we see Hannes. Um, that one just tore oh. my heart in oh. so many pieces. Um, but it made me, it, it was so bittersweet because it was his moment again that he had in the very first episode, but he's human. He's human. And and up until that point, I, I always get this mixed up, but he, I don't think he had ever actually seen a Titan up close. Isn't that correct, Mike? Like he had never, right? I believe so. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, they were guardians <laughs> of the, of the wall and, uh, uh, garrison unit and things like that. So uh, normally right. they don't ever have to mess with them. They certainly don't have to like approach him with ODM gear. Mm -hmm. No. And so, and, and I think he always kind of wanted that as a soldier. I think he probably always wanted that moment to defend someone and especially Aaron, you know, he, cares about Aaron. So I, that scene just really hurt so much. I, I remember being really upset, but I also remember just thinking, but that that's perfect for him. That's perfect for that character because he, he just, you know, he deserved that moment. He deserved that moment that he did not get to have. So that, that just always, Oh, my heart. So yeah. <laughs> Does Jean cry at all in the show? Um, Jean does like the stiff upper lip, one tear cry from time to time. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and he, he, he does some emotional type stuff, but it's usually like shaky voice reserved. You know, he's still trying to contain himself. He doesn't like unleash mm -hmm. and scream to the heavens. Yeah. Uh, I do. I, I do love when he's trying to <laughs> basically beat the crystal that, Annie is in because he's just I feel bad for him in that moment because he's very much like come on this is messed up you know face the music and I I, I personally loved what you did in that scene so it may not be an emotional scene but it's it, it, for Jean you know <laughs> it, it is an emotional scene and, and thank you for the, the kind words about that uh, Jean uh, does like when I, I, I take it back it's not that he doesn't cry to the heavens whatever he usually doesn't cry like in absolute anguish and and grief and giving up it's more like pissed off uh right vengeful type of emotional outbursts i can appreciate that Maybe we can all <laughs> I, I a remember, good angry cry you know i remember a very gritty cry out you know like when he was defending mikasa i think somewhere in season two and also just the big vicious like Rhino! when they're going in for the armored titan Mm -hmm. uh, there's things like that that definitely do happen, but uh, there's just yeah. not uh, there's not a lot of like falling to his knees and crying out to the heavens of how awful everything is. It's, right. <laughs> yes. it's, it's usually aggressive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so looking at the time, I think we are going to start wrapping it up here. Um, so first off, thank you so much to everybody for joining us here at GalaxyCon. Uh, of course, go to GalaxyCon.com to... <laughs> <laughs> and hey, if you, if, if you are a, a voice actor, have a bad day. There we go. We've got no, the Mike and Carlin special it's right on the screen for you. <laughs> 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 Uh, fantastic. It'll be okay, everybody. <laughs> It'll be okay. Um, so, yeah, who would like to go first with some parting words or some cool stuff that they're up to? Uh, 
Well, th- thanks for having me. Uh, hi. <laughs> uh, thanks. I, I really am happy to be here. It's it's very nice to meet. Uh, I've met Lauren at cons before, uh, and and obviously I've been working with Mike as the director. But it's been really nice to meet you, Josh, and and Trina as well. Uh, especially since, you. yeah, especially since, like I said, uh, it, uh, I started off watching this show when it first came out, and I fell off for a bit. But I, it's definitely it's super amazing to to at least be a part of something that I was a fan of so long ago and and now I get to sit up here with you guys and it's 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 just amazing and and I love it and thanks um if you want to keep up with me I I just I have Twitter that's the main thing I use I just have at my last name first name at Bogus Bryson and yeah Uh, so uh, i so i have a couple of things uh, and i'll try and get through them quickly because we have we have three people after this but uh pretty much you guys can follow me at uh, lauren underscore a underscore landa at uh on twitter i also uh twitch stream i'm also a twitch streamer now which is weird uh it's just a lauren landa no spaces in between um please follow me on there because we have a lot of great streams including a stream tomorrow night at uh, five o'clock p.m pacific standard time which uh it's the very first time anything like this has been done we will be bringing on engineers audio engineers as my guests um and I'm very excited heroes. about that. <laughs> exactly. The, the true unsung heroes of this industry and, and especially during COVID and all of that. Yeah. Um, so they'll be answering questions, probably telling some funny and amazing stories, behind the scenes stuff. Uh, very excited <laughs> for that. And like I said, you could just go to twitch.tv slash Lauren Landa, no spaces in between. And then the last thing um, I just announced less than an, I think about an hour ago, is that I was recently announced as the uh, as the villain of uh, in a new upcoming show called Farfetched. Uh, I voice Blair. Uh, I'm very, very excited because I have not done as many original animated shows as I have anime. So I'm very, very excited about that. Very, very excited. Um, yeah, please follow me on Twitter and the Twitches and 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 check out the stream tomorrow. And thank you guys uh, for checking us out today. Thank you. Uh, you can find me at uh, Josh Greeley uh, on Twitter, at Josh Greeley, both on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, I recently... Actually, I can't talk about that yet. Ha! Uh, oh. The... Uh, <laughs> We're about to start the uh, we're about to start the next season of My Hero Academia in a few weeks, so be on the lookout for that. And uh, you can also see me on uh, Toonami right now for uh, Doctor Stone as well. I play Kingro, uh, really awesome show. If you haven't checked it out, it's uh, it's uh, it's kind of like uh, being thrown into a survival game and having to use science as your only weapon. It's super cool, um, and. Uh, other than that, yeah, just check out, keep an eye on my Twitter. I have some really cool stuff coming down the pike that I can't talk about yet, but hopefully in about a month or two. So check it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, you may follow me here. <laughs> Ooh, you're just prepared. <laughs> like, yeah. Less prepared. I learned that from Bryce Pappenbrook, like always do this situation. Ah, I also love that I'm interacting with the screen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 Josh, high five me. Oh, oh no! Uh, almost, almost. <laughs> it's pretty close. It's pretty close. It was mirrored um, on my end. I got confused. <laughs> I do too. Um, thank you so much for having me on, Mario, and thank you, Mario, for hosting. This has been so much fun um, in such a challenging time in everyone's lives. Uh, times like this where we get to connect with other people, albeit virtually, uh, means so much to me. Um, There are things that uh, are coming out, like My Hero Academia and um, a few other things that I will also be able to announce soonish. If you'd like to follow me here, (laughs) then that's where I announce those things. Um, But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting the show. It has truly been uh, one of the biggest blessings of my life to play Mikasa and meet so many amazing people. Um, And as far as parting words, uh, this year, uh, 12 months, has been um, challenging for everyone in the world. 
for different reasons, uh, but my biggest parting message would be to be kind because everyone is going through something right now. And um, even though it's frustrating and you wanna honk your horn and scream at somebody or like ask somebody to move faster in the grocery line or whatever, uh, please keep in mind that it's been a year and uh, we're all going through it. And I cannot wait until we're on the other side. Mm-hmm. Big heart. Well said. Well said. What about you, Mike? Yeah, um, bring us home, Mike. <laughs> um, I, uh, let's see, on the social media world, I'm at Mike McFarland VA on Twitter, and same on Instagram. I have a uh, page where I update from time to time on the Facebook as well. Um, I don't have a Twitch or anything of that sort because uh, I'm usually working about 18 hours a day, something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, or a lot anyway, uh, and uh, I don't have time to add more work. So I do what I can, and I answer what I can when I can. Um, uh, thank you for the kindness message, Trina. I was going to throw something out like that. So yeah, second what Trina said. Um, everybody <laughs> has been through a lot, and uh, spreading kindness and uh, being cool with each other goes a long way. Mm-hmm. Um, be good to each other. Yeah. Um, Beyond that, uh, streaming-wise, I just started in on a show called Bottom Tier Character Tomozaki as the ADR director, and that's a fun show, and you can check that out on Funimation's streaming service. Rock and roll. Well, thank you once again to all of you. Thank you so much to everybody who tuned in. Thank you once again. As always, stay happy, stay healthy, stay informed, and we'll see you guys again soon.